good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made, and as always, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. So we're outside on this beautiful day. So if you hear background noises like some of the crows that's in these trees around here, or see our squirrels scuttling by, but we're outside. Yes. But we want to talk uh, to you today about marriage, mm -hmm. something that's near to our heart. Yes. But before we go into this study that God has placed on our heart, I would you pray? Yes. Father, we do thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you for the sun, S-U-N, shining on the outside. We thank you for the sound of the birds. And we thank you most of all because Jesus, the S-O-N sun on the inside, always shines. And God, we want today to talk about the preparation of our hearts. So we want to prepare our hearts and we ask your Holy Spirit to come in to prepare our hearts to receive the Word of God. Prepare our hearts to allow Jesus, you are the Christ, and your love to shine in us, Lord. We ask you to give us ears to hear and eyes to see, Lord, what only you can reveal, Father. Now we ask you to hide us behind the cross of Calvary to realize it is all about you, Jesus, because we know that you establish an institution of marriage. And Father, we honor God. We want to honor you in this time to share with our sisters and brothers, Lord, the things that you have poured into us, Lord, and what your word is and what your purposes are and your plans are for marriage, the first institution that you establish. And we ask you right now, Lord, to let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be accepted in your sight. For, oh, Lord, truly, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank amen. you, Amen. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. The words of our mouth be acceptable. Mm -hmm. And what we have to share with you today, we believe that truly is from our heart, mm -hmm. and we believe that it will be acceptable to your ears. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about a heart. Yes. Amen. Talk about heart. Mm -hmm. And there's a scripture in Proverbs 17:22 says, "A merry heart doth good like medicine, but a broken spirit or heart dryeth the bones." Mm -hmm. A broken heart. Yes can anything that's broken um, you know can bleed if it has something in it or if it's something that's broken um, it's in disrepair yes and so we want to talk about guarding our hearts yes. or keeping our hearts mm -hmm. and the scripture says also in Proverbs chapter 4 verse uh, 23 says uh, Keep thy heart with all diligence, mm -hmm. for out of it are the issues of life. Mm -hmm. Keep or guard thy heart with all diligence. Mm -hmm. So being diligent mm -hmm. to protect our heart. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. to protect it mm -hmm. from being broken. There are, there are a lot of uh, marital relationships where over the process of time, the heart has become broken. Yes. Yes. And over, after a period of time, mm -hmm. they begin to drift further and further and further mm -hmm. apart. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we talk about is when we talk about arguments. Mm -hmm. And I made the example. I said, you know, sometimes when we have an argument and we turn our backs to each other, mm -hmm. I gave the example. Sometimes when we in bed at night, the scripture says. Don't let the sun go down on our wrath, mm -hmm. and we turn our backs to each other, mm -hmm. but never my heart. Yes, amen. Sometimes mm -hmm. we didn't speak to each other, but there was a, a, a bit of silence, but my heart was always mm -hmm. near and dear to you. Amen. And I think that is so important, Curtis, that um, one of the things that I think that has really kept us with these 50 years loving each other and growing closer as we get older, going through the seasons of life um, where everything can come at you to pull you apart, to mm -hmm. destroy you. Yes. We know that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we know that he hates relationships. Yes. And we know that he hates the institution of marriage because like never before, marriage and family is under fierce attack by the evil one because it is the foundation for society. 
however, for a civil society, for a healthy family. But you talk about the heart, and what I'm learning is that the key is that we never turned our hearts away. Yeah. We never turned our hearts away. Like you said, we may have turned our backs away, but, but we never turned our hearts away. Because what happens, as you just said, over time, uh, bitterness, when bitterness just creeps into our hearts, it becomes hardened. And I really believe that a lot of the physical uh, conditions of the heart, uh, cardiac arrest, and mm. even there's a condition called cardiomyopathy, uh, which I found out comes, means actually a broken, a broken heart. Uh, and so I think all that comes from over time not resolving the issues of our heart. But what I found according to scripture is that the Bible teaches us um, according to Proverbs 16 and 1 that the preparation of the heart really is our responsibility. We have to prepare our hearts. See, I prepared my heart and I also um, understood that I have to prepare it as my responsibility. Yes. Because if I turn my heart away from you, then that doesn't give God room and the Holy Spirit room to come in. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that heart get darkened? How does that heart, it doesn't happen overnight, it happens over time. And so, um, I think first of all, we need to make plans to prepare our hearts. And how do I prepare my heart to keep it toward you mm -hmm. and to not get allowed the offenses that come, the disappointments that come? to turn my heart against you. I think I have to make a decision every day that I am going to prepare my heart by what I pay attention, what I listen to, what I hear, yes. what I see. I have to decide that. Now Matthew 22 and 37 says that we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, yes. with all of our mind, mm -hmm. and with all of our soul. So I believe if the model for marriage and relationships between a husband and wife should be that as a, a with God. Now, um, to love God with all my heart, I can't love God with all my heart and love you. So that is my model for loving you as well. Mm -hmm. So if I love God with all my heart, then God will give me the grace that I need to love you the way I should love yes. you. Now, how do I protect my heart? By loving God and allowing his love to flow through me mm -hmm. so that I can have love to give to you whether I want to or not, not based on feelings, not based on emotions, but according to my soul. How do I love you the way I love the Lord with my soul, with my emotions? Mm -hmm. That means I'm going to feed my mind, my ears, and all the gateways where the enemy can come in yeah. to bring bitterness and anger and resentment and unforgiveness then it's my responsibility because I want to love you the way I love the Lord. Yes. And I found that if I continue to focus on loving the Lord with all of my heart, all of my mind, all of my soul, and my neighbor is myself. Yes. So you're my, you know, if I love my neighbor myself, how much more am I supposed to love you? That's right. So Jesus is always our model. Yes. Christ set the standard. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a scripture in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. It says, follow my brother, whatsoever things are true, mm. whatsoever things are honest, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. Okay, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So it gives us a, a kind of a, a list yes. of things that we could do to help mm -hmm. guard the heart. Mm -hmm. So it says, what sort of things about uh, true? Mm -hmm. What is yes. what is what is uh, true yes. about my mate? Yes. What is true mm -hmm. about you? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to listen to anything that, that any any outside person, mm -hmm. any outside influence are going mm -hmm. to tell me about you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna know that what's true about you. That's right. You know. That's right. I know you. Mm -hmm. I dwell with you according to knowledge. Yes. As the scriptures say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what sort of things are true? Mm -hmm. Then what sort of things are, are uh, honest? Yes. Yes. Trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are those are those are the things that if if I uh, do these things intentional. Yes, that's the key to be intentional. About I got to be have mm -hmm. to be intentional about that. Mm -hmm. And this this is the way that we that I can that we can guard our hearts. Mm -hmm. Couples that we can guard our hearts. That's right. 
Because you're not just going to have a good marriage. You have to decide, like you said, be intentional. Yes. Studying, like we often talk about how it's important to become a student of your marriage. You know, we study everything else in the world that we want to study. Get, and we have so much knowledge at our fingertips. You know, all you got to do is just click one button on your phone or you turn the TV, anything you want to know about. And it's amazing to me how we study and know something about everything but the person that we're living with, the person that we're uh, doing life with. And this is what I would like to tell a lot of the couples who are contemplating marriage. Uh, let's look at uh, how you do life because uh, the wedding is just one day. But oh, yes. I think we fail to realize is that this is someone that you want to do life with. So it may be a better idea to, to spend a lot of time talking and studying each other. Look at the family history. Look at the habits, uh, the mindset, the principles, the values, the virtues, the things in, that you grew up with that uh, shaped the experiences that you had, uh, the, the, the advice uh, that you got from family members. And, and, and look at how uh, situations were dealt with, mm -hmm. conflicts were dealt with. Mm -hmm. Look at how finances were dealt with. Look at the value of what everything means and, and understand that all of these things are going to shape not only the two of you, but we're talking about a whole generation. I think we need to learn to look at marriage uh, more uh, in terms of with eternity in mind. You yeah. know, with the church and mm -hmm. the next generation. So that means I need to study you mm -hmm. and you need to study me. And then when we come together, then we decide, is this going to be compatible? Do we have the same goals? Do we have the same understanding of what we're trying to do? But like you said, everything begins with the heart. Where is my heart? Mm -hmm. You know, do, do I accept you the way you are or am I going to want to try to change you? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And because when you start to change somebody, you already you know, you're headed for trouble there because you can't change anybody. God is the only person who can change us. Yeah, we so many times, well, you know, he's this, particularly with, mm -hmm. with the, the, uh, the wife against the husband. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know he has his habit and I know mm -hmm. he does this, but you know what? Mm -hmm. I'll get him married and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll change him. I, I, you know, I'll, 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 don't worry, That's right. but it never happens. That's right, it doesn't <laughs> happen that way. Yes. That's right. That's right, but see, if my heart is connected to your heart, and uh, no matter what happens, I'm always going to believe the best in you, see, and your heart's connected to my heart. You're not going to tell me anything. Nobody's going to bring anything to me about you, and, and or I'm not going to begin to change my attitude toward you if my heart is fixed, mm -hmm. you know. And and and, and I, my heart belongs to you. Mm -hmm. See, I we my heart belongs to you. Your heart belongs to me, and that's so important. But that's not going to happen if you don't put the right things in your heart. If you don't meditate on the things, Med what do you meditate in your heart mm -hmm. about your spouse? Mm -hmm. you see? What are you thinking about? What are you feeding into your heart, into your spirit? Yes. What are you feeding into that? Are you feeding into negativity? Are you around people all the time who are always talking against marriage? Yes. Are you always, are you around, uh, like I said, let's go back and look at what you saw modeled out growing up. You know, if it was, if it went into your spirit yes. that you have to compete with mm -hmm. your spouse. If you are watching social, you always on social media, yes. and they're constantly comparing their lives, and, and all they do is try to uh, impress each other, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. uh, you know, and they put all this stuff. And if that's what you're looking at, if that's what you're feeding to your ears, into your eyes, into your mind, yes, that is going to going take to over, you. effect, right? It's, it's going to affect you. Yeah. And the, and the thing about this phone here, mm -hmm. it, it's it's always going off. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yep. always mm -hmm. it's always something to uh, you know people have Facebook and mm -hmm. everything that they that they that they use mm -hmm. to uh, that can affect them mm -hmm. that can pull their heart away from their mm -hmm. spouse because you, you you begin to watch with somebody where they're going what they're doing what they board mm -hmm. the kind of car they drive mm -hmm. and, and your enemy starts talking to you mm -hmm. and, and, and you know so you start you start looking at each other That's right. you know real funny mm -hmm. and, and and all of these things that chip away. Mm -hmm. you know, by affection for each other, That's right. our heart. So, you know, try to just, you know, get off social media. That's right. Because that, that will, that will kind of, that will drain us. 
that will drain your heart. That's true. You know, mm -hmm. and pull you away. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you said something interesting. My mind went <clears> back to the scripture that says, set your affections. I think it's Colossians. Set your affections above. On things above, oh. right. Mm -hmm. And I think the heart, uh, I think uh, your affections, the question we have to ask ourselves is, what are we setting our affections on? True. You know, are we setting our affections on things above? Or are we setting our affections on God, on yes. the things of God? Right. Are we seeking to be more like Jesus? Are we seeking to cultivate the character of Christ, the fruit walk and the fruits of the Spirit, love, kindness? Mm -hmm. uh, those, those are fruits yes. of the Spirit, gentleness, yes. uh, long-suffering, mm -hmm. uh, self-control. All of those are fruits of the Spirit. And so those can only be cultivated when we decide to set our affections on those things that are above. Now it is amazing when I began to, and be careful, guard against, when your affection for your spouse leaves, when you lose that affection for them, that's huge. That's a very dangerous place to be in mm -hmm. because that means you got your affection set somewhere else. You can't have a divided heart. Oh yeah. Can't have a divided heart. Mm -hmm. My heart, all of my heart's got to be toward him. Mm -hmm. All of his heart has to be toward me. Yes. Two hearts together becoming one because the goal is one. Mm -hmm. The goal is oneness. Yes. The goal is we and not me. And so the problem is what are we setting our affections on? Am I setting my affections on things above mm -hmm. or on things on this, on this earth? Mm -hmm. And we know that if we set our affections on the things of this earth, those things will fail us every time. Those things have no foundation. Those things on this earth are very temporal. Yes. They won't stand the test of time. They will not uh, build anything for the future. Mm -hmm. There will be no family legacy. There will be no way to really, um, you know, transfer the whole value of marriage, the blessing yes. of marriage, yes. and, and the oneness. Yes. Now, we, mm -hmm. uh, this past June 19th, mm -hmm. we celebrated uh, 50 years. Mm -hmm. Of marriage, mm -hmm. and oftentimes we, we like to sit and talk about over the years the, the, the things that that came at us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the things that, like I said, I often talk about the foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that that that, that shook us, and the things that mm -hmm. uh, could have caused our hearts to drift in each other. That's right. Mm -hmm. But it, it made us, and so right. we kind of kind of go back and think about you know what. What was going on this time? There were financial issues. There were issues with, with sickness. Right. But through it, all of that, mm -hmm. we kept my commitment to each other. Right. My heart never turned, even though mm -hmm. there were times I explained to you that I, I went through bouts of depression and, you know, being young, marriage and mm -hmm. not having a model out in front of me. Right. Like some of the guys I used to work with, they would, they would, uh, they would drink or they would run around with other women or or whatever the enemy will tell them to do mm -hmm. that will drive them away from home mm -hmm. that will affect their heart. That's right. And they, you look up mm -hmm. and you're looking at this person next to you mm -hmm. and you say, well, who is this person? Mm -hmm. Well, the enemy began to chip away to use the circumstances of life, mm -hmm. the issues of life, mm -hmm. the crisis of life yes. to, to cause that, mm -hmm. that heart to mm -hmm. drift right. and not having the Understanding that you have to invest in your marriage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Understanding that your your marriage is is yes, it's ministry. Yes, it is. absolutely. It definitely is. I think it's you know, the highest ministry. Your marriage is ministry, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. what we do is represent as a husband. Mm -hmm. I represent Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's right. to love you, right? Never leave you, mm -hmm. nor forsake you, mm -hmm. and that's my heart. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. He's talking about a heart. Mm -hmm. God said, I'll never leave you. My heart, God said, I will never turn my heart away, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. from you, my daughter, yes. my son. Yes, yes, that affection. That affection. And the Bible says that at the heart, so the issues of life. Yes. And so those issues, um, and I think that's why the heart sick with um, yes. hope, hope deferred, deferred makes, makes the, the heart, heart sick. sick. So mm -hmm. I think we have a lot of, as I said before, physical uh, heart conditions, mm -hmm. congestive heart failures and all of those, I think it betrays a lot to the, uh, 
the heart that needs to be healed from broken mm -hmm. hearts caused by the issues of life. Yes. Um, the, the unforgiveness that you just kept putting, borrowing, like you mm -hmm. said, like the men that you knew on your job, that when they were going through tough times, the difference between you know you and them is mm -hmm. that they would go to their friends, they would go to you know drink, gambling, or, what? or yes. whatever, yes. drugs, mm -hmm. and oftentimes this is open the door for affairs. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah. they go to the gym, or yeah. they, they, they mm -hmm. get the golf clubs, anything, that whatever, mm -hmm. that, will, that will take them away. Right. The enemy will, will, put mm -hmm. the, will, will place these things and pull mm -hmm. you away, mm -hmm. you know, from your spouse, right. rather than coming together, mm -hmm. you know, and praise so, honey, you know, let's, mm -hmm. we've been realizing what the enemy mm -hmm. is, is creeping in here, mm -hmm. you know, and spend mm -hmm. time to pray together, yes. you know, and, and looking at the, studying the word together mm -hmm. to, to safeguard our heart. Yes. And I believe there also there's a medical condition mm -hmm. where um, couples can even, they said, die of a broken heart. You can die of a broken heart. That's been proven. Yes. You can die of a broken heart. Spiritually, then you can, you I really guess, can. like a broken heart. Yes. You really can, because I remember last year uh, when things were so bad in the nursing homes, I talked to a lady who said her mom had died and she was grieving. And uh, I said, I was assuming it was COVID, you mm -hmm. know. And mm -hmm. she said, no, it was a broken heart yes. because she was so lonely mm -hmm. and she was missing. Uh, uh, so badly. She said the loneliness and the isolation is what caused her to to uh, to die, actually. Uh, you can die of a broken heart. Now think about, now think about that in terms of a marital relationship. Mm -hmm. you, your, your loneliness, mm -hmm. uh, your spouse, you don't spend time together, your depression sets in, mm -hmm. uh, you can be you can be within a marriage, mm -hmm. within the family, with things going on around you, with the kids, mm -hmm. going about doing your daily routine. But you can be lonely. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, so that's probably the worst kind of loneliness. Uh, yes, I've told I've told some of my single friends that uh, some of the loneliest women I know, unfortunately, are unfortunately, married. Unfortunately, yes, that's really sad. Yes. And they look at me like, wow. I said, yes. Mm -hmm. I said, so you better wait for God to send you the right person, because if you think you're lonely now, there's nothing more lonely that my friends, uh, my daughters, and over the years, my sisters, who were married to people who live in the house with them, mm -hmm. and sometimes there were children too, where they felt so neglected, and they felt more lonely. To have someone ignore you that's in the house with you, yes. probably is far more lonely. Because the difference between being alone and being lonely, right? Yes. <laughs> so I said, you might want to be alone than to be lonely because there's right. a big difference. That's right. You can be around a lot of people. So that's a good point you yes. you made, Curtis. And I just thank God because you and I have never um, been been um, lonely. We've been alone uh, because there are times when you would have to go to work and mm -hmm. you would be going long hours mm -hmm. out of town. Yes. And I missed you. But I, my heart was connected to you, yes. so I didn't feel lonely. I was alone, but I didn't feel lonely because my heart was connected to you. Yes. Now, we didn't have the cell phones way back 30 years ago when you were driving and going out of town all the time. Yes. And I just had to, that's how I really learned to pray and get close to God mm -hmm. because otherwise I would worry myself sick that you get there okay and how you're doing the road or whatever. But because my heart was connected to you, I knew I trusted you, mm -hmm. and I didn't feel lonely, even though I was alone. Yes. Because I knew that we were connected in our heart. My heart was to you, and your heart was to me. Why? Because when you got back home, you were always so happy to be home and looking forward to coming in, sitting down, sharing your week with me, your experiences with me, yes. and say, saying, you and I have always shared everything yes. together. And we'd always make time for yes. that, uh, that uh, date. Once a week date that yes. we would have, yes. you know. And, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, thank God for this opportunity to come to you, our Ebenezer family. Mm -hmm. uh, tune in. we got some more good teaching. Yes. Uh, part two mm -hmm. about the heart. Yes. About guarding your heart. We want to deal with that. Yes. Yes, and just yes. share. Let's share. Mm -hmm. what, what we've learned, mm -hmm. some things the hard way, yes. but nevertheless we learn. And no matter how hard it is, if your heart, if you're one heart, yes. Okay, together, yes. And you prepare your heart 
to love your mates no matter what. And you renew your commitment to the Lord, loving Him first, yes. putting Him first. Let Him have your heart. Take those hurts to Him. Take that pain and that those disappointments to Him. Yes. And He will heal your heart. Yes. And Jesus alone is the only person who can heal your heart. Yes. Your sp spouse cannot heal your heart. Jesus is the only person who can heal your heart, but you have to allow Him to. And remember, the preparation is with you. We have to prepare our hearts for the Lord to heal our hearts. Yes. And when He does it, it is done, and we don't have to worry about it being good. Yes. So, Father, just, just thank you for this word coming forth. Thank you for allowing us to bring forth this teaching. Mm -hmm. God, we pray that those that are viewing mm -hmm. this teaching, God, will examine themselves, God, and don't listen to what the enemy is talking to them about their heart concerning their name. God, we look to you, who is the author and the finisher of our faith.